going to be spent and we were assured they were going to be spent this year. Uh, similarly, we were successful in getting $800,000 for sidewalk improvements in front of Corning School. Uh, again, uh, thanks to all of us. It wasn't just this body. It was everybody who went to city council and made that known. And then lastly, we've already gotten uh, a $50,000 grant to look at having a town center. So this body in six months, really six to eight months at most, has already had a number of successes. Uh, I think you also heard Ms. Sonia Smith and Charles Tiller talk about they're looking at another grant, and we are looking actively at pursuing that. I uh, don't want to get into too much detail because I don't believe in building up hopes until we got it. But uh, we're going after other grants. And so this body is here. They're active. They're, they're doing a great many things to improve Frazier. You heard the committee meeting dates. I would ask you all, if you want to be a part of any of those committees, get in touch with the people you saw who spoke and were introduced as a chairman, or leave your name back in the back and what committee you'd like to be on, and we'll make sure we get in touch with you. But now is the time for you to get involved and to join us and be a part of what we're trying to do. Yeah, question, along the lines of uh, progress report for the DNC process, is it possible for us as the board of directors to have a report card that states where we are, what we've done, what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are, so moving forward, whoever's elected in the next election knows how to make the momentum that we've already started continue? Yes, in fact, part of what I'm going to be required to do in the next five days is to do uh, a year report to folk in Washington. <laughs> so it's going to outline where we've gone, what we've done, where we've gotten to, and what we're working on, what we hope to work on in the next five months. Because, again, that, that's the other thing I did mention, and it's never too early to talk about it. Uh, there are going to be five slots on this neighborhood council that are going to be up for election in May. And those of you who sit out there can be up here. Uh, because there's going to be an election for five people. Uh, some of the folk here will be up for election, will stand again, and you may think that they ought to be reelected, or you may think you need to be in their position. But it's a democratic process and, you know, in May. So uh, we will be holding another election for five of the slots and 15 slots on the board. Oh, huh. Oh, yeah, and we, did, we have two designated positions for young people. Mr. Benjamin wanted me to let you all know there are two slots, and in fact, one of our slots is, is held by Kevin. Kevin, stand up and let everybody see who you are. <laughs> Kevin's a student at Trezman, but he's also got so many honors, I, I can't go through them all. He just got, he just got pointed out. In fact, I'll let uh, Myron, Myron, yeah, Myron, go ahead and tell him about Kevin. Uh, he just, uh, he all right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when, when you all were standing up, uh, it just reminded me of, uh, Summer of 2012, he was selected to go to the Arctic. The Arctic. That's Greenland. Uh, the, the Arctic. You know? and, uh, and so it just. And they get to go to Spain. They get to go to Spain, yeah. You know? and so just, just a great opportunity. So he, he's uh, part of the, the uh, leadership treasurer, the uh, Frazier Youth Council, as well as the Frazier Neighborhood Council. Outstanding young man. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we just won the John. Uh, the Bull Bramlett Award among all high school students uh, through the FCA. Um, and just, just an outstanding young man. He's done mission trips. Um, just a really studious uh, young man. And just being consistent and persistent. And I just encourage you all to, to stay in it, stay consistent. Uh, sometimes these meetings may seem boring to you, but stay out of them. Get, get all you can and can all you get. So just a little bit that you can learn or you can pick up from some of these guys like DeAndre and, and all these guys using these big words. Uh, that you're not understand yet, you know, just, just, just sucking all in. So uh, uh, congratulations to you all. I'm proud of you all. So anyway, but yeah, that, that's his story. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, the uh, other thing that we had on the whole business was the selection of the public relations communication person. Again, we have determined that we need to do a better job of getting the word out about what we're doing, what's going on, and so we're actually going to hire somebody to do that. Uh, the board voted uh, to basically allow, uh, we had some proposals uh, that were presented and they agreed to allow me to sort of act as the, the reviewer, uh, I guess you would call it the the uh, better of the proposals. We came to one that we think is outstanding, but there were a few questions 
pending the resolution of those questions, then we will either accept that contract and move forward, or we will uh, go in a different direction. But there will be someone whose responsibility is to engage all of you and others to be a part of this process over the next five months and beyond. Uh, to make sure that you do have an opportunity to be involved. Make sure that we do get communications out to you. Uh, to make sure that you all have an opportunity to participate because we need your participation. And, and I'm just going to take one brief moment to make one quick point. There are 50,000 folks in prison. Young people, 47% of them are 24 and younger. Which means that this community needs your input and your participation. Everything that we're doing, literally, is about you. So we need to get you engaged, spread the word, tell folks, you know, they're doing something, you know, and yeah, you know, you might have to sit through some stuff, but you know, if you come, you know, uh, you know we can have an input in it and we can be involved and get involved. And to the rest of you, I want to say this, that, you know, 50,000 folks, uh, we doing great. We got a lot of people here on Saturday morning, and that's wonderful. And I was city council and county commission, I know to get 50 folk in the room on Saturday morning is an outstanding job. But with 50,000 folk, 50 folk in the room, 75 folk in the room, is not where we need to be going. So one of the reasons we're getting a marketing communication person is to get more folk involved and to make sure that we do have them uh, reaching out to you all, getting as many of you to come and be a part of this, because this is about you. Next thing, I guess, is what strategy you proposal you did. You don't need the community proposal. Okay. I'm going to lead into it, and then I'll give it a chart. Part of what we're trying to do in reaching out to folks is to have you, the residents, be involved in organizing and helping to organize yourselves, and then using people who are already doing that in the community to work with you to do that. Uh, certainly, uh, Rangeland and Charlie Caswell had a proposal about how we could bring folk together, get them more engaged in not only this process, but long term being a part of everything that was going on in Frazier. So, with that, I'll turn it over to Charlie. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I just want to hold this banner up first of all, just to start off. Uh, this this banner, what you'll start to see everyone that you're coming to Frazier after tonight, uh, is that every entrance coming into Frazier, you'll see this banner, unit to the community, they're basically putting the neighbor back in the hood, help restore our community, become a Frazier ambassador. And uh, so let me go in, in the phone number and the website that uh, Chef me didn't say because it's new. You can go back. We can there now. Basically, uh, I'm going to say. But you look at the community basically the concept behind that is you know, all about the BNCP is to build neighborhood capacity. What's more importantly than having a marketing team, some company to come in here and be able to market who we are, what we're doing, is us ourselves. We are the best marketing people sharing this information with our residents and, and community. We have a number of cars here as well. As, if we can get these passed out. Uh, yeah, get these here. Uh, these flyers here. These flyers that I'm passing out is basically a structure that was put into place that would basically help us, the community, to become more engaged. We had an awesome meeting on yesterday with American Red Cross that's going to be one of our partners that's coming in to provide residents with our CERT training, CPR training, disaster relief training. Because one of the things is a lot of times, Frazier is one of the highest number communities when it comes to house fires. And you have people have to come in from outside of our community to come in to help residents who have been involved in that fire when we ourselves can be able to be a, a better help to our neighbor. So through the unity and the community initiative, basically you can have a coordinated uh, faction. And, and that coordinated right now organization is uh, Range Line and, and myself. And, and through that is we're going to have you, the neighbors, to become more involved in this process to become a Frazier ambassador on your block. 
And with that, if we asking every block, and we're going down every block in Frazier to get someone resident on that street to step up. And I know a lot of people say, I work, I can't really, really be involved. So we're going to make it a lot easier for you. Because we have so many other people that's in our community that's doing great work, the students and others, that on the, in your, as, as a Frazier ambassador, you will be given and trained by this manual. Our first orientation is going to be January the 20th, that's Martin Luther King Day, at Union Grove Baptist Church. And we, uh, that's 2285 Frazier. Boulevard, then we're going to give an orientation there. First training is going to be the following Tuesday, January the 27th. And in that training, basically, we'll go through this manual and show the structure of that. In here, basically, you got every resource as a result to every known resource that you can reach out as a captain on your block, as groups that's in our community, youth groups. Uh, uh, churches, other things that's going on, as well as cold enforcement in the city of DeMuro's number, Red Cross, and other partners. But as an ambassador, if you know something happening on your street, you're able to share that information with your neighbors to get your neighbors more involved. And one of the ways you're going to say, well, my own, I, I've been living in my house for 20 years, I don't even know my neighbor. Well, we're going to try to change that. And one of the ways we're going to approach that is the fire department with the fire department. The fire department basically going to go in with us initially. We're going to knock on the door with the fire department and offer to put smoke detectors in the house, right? And so with that, they're going to say, your block captain, Mr. Charles Taylor, the praise ambassador over here, help organize this. And so that's going to get your neighbor to say, hey, I want to know what, what else we got planned. And so that's all in this plan. So through that structure is, so how we get everybody involved is the coordinator, us right now, Fraser Neighborhood Council. The Fraser Ambassador is the second step. The Fraser Ambassador then recruits you as a, res a neighbor, become a neighborhood watch. Then that ties us in with DeAndre Brown and the Crime Committee and the Memphis Police Department who come in and train those neighbors under that neighborhood watch block captain. So now we're all engaged and involved. And in that yard of that Fraser Ambassador will be brochure holders that Ship was talking about. It'll be information about every uh, event that we got coming up in Fraser. Voter registration cards will be placed in those holders. So if you're just walking down the street and we're looking, we'll be talking with the pastors on this on uh, Tuesday at the next meeting about having it at, 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 in front of every church. But if you're just walking down the street, you're able to pull out of there and find out events that's happening and find out what's going on in your community without having to go knock on your neighbor door and get them out of bed to ask what's going on. And then from there, you'll have all those papers or contact number that, uh, and these are the yard signs that you'll see in those ambassadors the yards with the brochure holders uh, attached to them. Uh, but it would give you an opportunity for us to get more people plugged in with what's going on. But one of the things you don't know, you see Mr. Lisa Franklin here today, she's helping us get the message out there. On, so y'all are here, but on Channel 31 Comcast, we on TV right now uh, through our new Fraser TV, right? So we got our own TV station going forward. Uh, and, and also that link is going to be our own YouTube where you can be able to see it at any time. And with that, you see on the bottom of that Fraser neighborhood, FraserNC.org. That is our new website that we have set up on there. And, and I want to thank well, one of our residents, Mr. Priya Gucci, who helped us uh, make that website. So to give it a resident a hand. And the design, another resident, he was here earlier, he designed all of this for us. Uh, and he stayed uh, right down the street. He actually did all the design for us, for the signs and everything. And that's what it's all about, getting residents involved and helping to train them. That's what watching the DC want to hear from us. That's, that is what we're doing, and that's what this Fraser Ambassador Program is all about. It's about you, the residents, being involved and engaged to help bring unity in the community. I think we're going to make it. I know we're going to make it there because, again, to have this many people here on the surge, especially our young people, this young man here, I'll ask him over his leadership training class and doing, and they're doing an awesome job organizing that training. We're going to see the same thing happen at Fraser and other schools, which we thank you for your leadership and what you're doing with our students. Uh, but throughout our community, <coughs> continue this initiative going forward. So we need your help. We need your input. We need you to become a Fraser ambassador on your block and help get the message out. Any questions, please, uh, you can see me after the meeting. All right, uh, public comment. Any public comment? We want to hear from you. From you. Yes, could you state your name and you with? My name is Sydney Collier. I am a teacher at Denver Elementary. Uh, I made an announcement on our Christmas program uh, about the PTA. 
And someone stepped up to me with a car and said, we were here for you all when ASD tried to take over your school, and we haven't seen you all since. Mm -hmm. And I promised that that would change. Mm -hmm. And all right. uh, all right. I am so excited to be here. I, I, right. I had no idea. I've been asking for a long time, where's the help? What's going on? You know, why is, why is nobody helping Frazier? So I'm, I'm just elated all this going on. I promised my husband I would not commit myself to anything, <laughs> but I, I, I was uh, here to get information. I received a lot of that, and I just want to be a part of, of a what's going on. I, I live in Millington, but I've worked in this community for the last like six years, and I'm concerned. I love, I love children. I love, the, uh, uh, I love teaching. <laughs> Spider, how thankful this is job is <laughs> But um, I'm just, I'm, I'm so proud to be here and thank all of you all. All of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You just saved Stephanie's role. I'm taking it off today. No, no, just kidding. But thank you for coming. Yeah. Support. I, I just want to thank you again for me, but I wanted to, in case it wasn't clear, we have uh, five subcommittees on this body. And so education is where I'm assuming you will plug in and, and get to be best friends with Sonia and, and the like. So, uh, I, you know, same goes for, us, for those of us in the housing. We're hoping that those subcommittees will continue to get smarter, better, more assertive, and do our work uh, and bring those reports back to us. So thank you. We're so glad. And this is Sonia. Say, raise your hands. And I do want to thank you because I uh, did reach out to, uh, to the school after we had the initial meetings with ASD. And uh, didn't have any response back from email and phone call. So I'm uh, glad you're here. And uh, we'll talk afterwards. Uh, a couple of things. One, uh, we have um, Ms. Maria, who is the new VISTA volunteer for Frazier, is working with Community Live. Maria, stand up so everybody can see. She's here. Of course, we have Ashley, who's with Community Live here. We want to recognize Ashley. They helped help me and Sam. I know they helped Eric put all this together. Of course, uh, Eric has already shared a comment from time to time, but he's the uh, president of Community Lift, and Community Lift is the entity that got the grant to help make this all possible. So you know, we are we are all working in 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 in, in basically in a large regard because of Community Lift. And lastly, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize my good friend who has stayed not only for the executive board meeting, but he stayed through the regular board meeting, and that's my good friend, State Representative Larry Miller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, I don't know if Larry would like to have a word or not, but I, I would hope it's for us that he would be appropriate. Good morning, everyone. Um, the young lady talked about how elated she was, Mr. Chairman, and uh, Mr. Director, and the council is about Frazier's on the move. Bar none, there's no question about that. You all are on the move. And as you all are living on the living room, I'm thinking, Steve, with your, your federal, your state, and local government elected officials, we need to be plugged in. I felt a little bit. No, this left out. It's like, fix that. We'll fix that. We <laughs> <laughs> need to fix that because when I, when I spoke in the Frazier Exchange the other day, we talked about those issues uh, that are going to start on the 14th of this month in the Tennessee General Assembly. And let me say to you all, I was, I was wishing that the General Assembly could run as cohesively and as smoothly as this meeting is going. I mean, it, it, it is a world of difference when you get into the foul of these issues on, on education and health care, public safety, job creation. It, 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 it's a totally different environment to deal with. But we're on the move. But I'm going to need you all, Sam, and, and, and you know this. You, you come to Nashville and, and say, let's meet with the Commission of Correction and talk about what's going on in Frazier. And, and I want that from each and every other chairman. Plug us in so either I can bring the commissioners to the departments that impact our lives on a daily basis, bring them here, 
or we go to them. I'm going to need that kind of support because, again, the environment is so different than what I've experienced in the last 10, 15 years. I'm going to need that kind of support. Members are coming out of Shelby County. Steve, you know that. We're going to need that kind of support coming from you all. So plug us in so that we can get on board and make a difference. Uh, the other day, I met with uh, MEA, Memphis Education Association, to talk about this the next big issue on education. It's going to be about vouchers. You know, that's going to be another issue. Uh, when it comes to job creation, we talked about electoral loss. Kenny Graves have already created 500 jobs. We're talking about creating 500 more jobs within the next five years. We need to figure out how do we bring more electoral loss in the city. How do we bring more electoral bucks in Frazier? I understand part of what that's going to take. We're going to have to give these businesses some, some incentives to say, come in and create new jobs, new opportunities, and new business opportunities. So it's a whole gamut of things. I can talk about it all day, but of course, we won't do that. Last but not least, I look forward to you all. Anytime you want to come to Nashville, anytime I need to come in and, and, and talk to you all about what's going on in Nashville and how we can engage the council. Matter of fact, invite the entire council to Nashville. I'll talk to lunch. Mm -hmm. In hotel. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then the other thing, the other thing, and I'm going to sit down, the other thing is this. Each and every year, the, the, the city council, the mayor gives us a legislative agenda, their wish list. And then we get the same thing from county government. This is a council. Give your federal government, your state government, local government, your wish an agenda. Because as I go to Nashville, I want to look and say, okay, this council is recommending that we consider passing this legislation that's going to impact single women. That's, that's, that's a major problem. We don't do enough for single women with children. And when you think about it in this community, that's a burden if we're not reaching out and giving them the type of support that they need. Okay? But, but if, if we don't know it, then it doesn't get done. So, so, so we need to build that. So in, in the long run, come up with an agenda where you present each and every year to the legislature simply saying, here are the type of laws we think you want. Here are the type of laws we want to reveal. Because I promise you, in and everything you do, some law is impacted by what you do and how you do it. And I hope I say it right. I'm running for real estate support. <laughs> <laughs> So let's get ready for that. Young people, uh, someone said it. This, this, at the end of the day, this is about you. Get involved, stay involved, because you are tomorrow's leaders. I'm right. telling you, and it's becoming more and more competitive in this society. It's becoming more and more competitive in this society. So don't take this for granted. It is your time. It is your time to shine. It is your time to burn, to grow, get involved and be the best that you can be. And I'm going to do all I can within my limited abilities and talents to help you out. That's why I'm going to sit in the office. Thank you. In, in November of this year, we will have our general election. We have the governor on the ballot in the United States Congress state representative, state senator. But what's going to be on that ballot in 2014 is a constitutional amendment to prohibit an income tax. Just let that sink in a little bit. A comprehensive constitutional amendment to prohibit. That thing is probably going to pass because people will go there and they will say, I don't want taxes, I'm tired of taxes they are both for it. But what it does, it will limit and restrict the ability of government now and in the future as our services to 
begin to grow, and they're going to grow. Services are going to grow. We will have a limited way of funding economically and financially. Right now it's the sales tax. And anybody that can tell you how high sales taxes are, they're pretty high. We have one of the highest sales taxes in the region. The other one is property taxes. So once you put an amendment in the Constitution, it almost takes the act of God to change that. It's not an easy process. In the current General Assembly, there's no way in the world that an income tax is going to pay. It's just not going to happen. When the income tax was introduced, the last time it was introduced, we were in session for about six months, normally we were there about three months. You had a Republican governor, a Democratic-controlled House, a Democratic-controlled Senate. If it didn't pass now, do you think it's going to pass with a super majority of Republicans? Absolutely not. But to put it in the Constitution is not a good <coughs> idea. Because if you think sales taxes are high now, just think of what's going to happen five years from now, ten years from now, when you only have limited ways of generating revenue. And for several years, I've been, eight, I've, well, I've been trying to get them to at least consider gains as, as a, an additional source. It's almost like, uh, it, that's exactly what it is, a resource and a choice. But again, this conservative environment is saying no to that. So vote against that thing, talk against it, it's not a good idea. Maybe that was too long, but. Well, I, I was just going to recognize my recognition. Ms. Keisha Walker was here, and I wanted to acknowledge her for the Chief County Governor. Uh, 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 Uncle Joe. Uncle Joe. I was going to recognize Uncle Joe is here. And, you know, uh, again, uh, I don't mean to sort of just single out folk, but these are folk who have been working in the trenches and doing a lot of crazy for a long time, as have all of us. Because the fact that you're here indicates that you're working in that regard. So I just want to, but I did want to thank them for taking time out of this schedule to come out. Uncle Joe. Joe. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, those of you who don't know my name is Joe Hunter, also known as Uncle Joe. I'm the founder and director of Gang Inc. Got for the Generation at the North Crazy Community Center. I've been in Crazy for about 12 years doing street ministry with gang members and children and families. And I, I, I'm just excited, y'all, because I've been at these meetings downtown about Crazy. It never happened. So I'm so glad that it's happened in Frazier from people of Frazier. Y'all got Uncle Joe, so don't think that you don't see me at no meeting. You ain't got me. You got me. Uh, just give me the information. I can get it to the people. I can help with the juice I have to make things happen. But uh, I'm proud of all of y'all, and I thank you personally for being there. Because Myron know is, you know, you know, Steve. It was like we was there by ourselves. We were talking to ourselves. Wasn't nobody else in the room. So it's, it's just good to have this structure, and it's official. It's real structure. And I'm one of them cats that now that we got real structure, now I bring everybody, they don't go for it, then we do what we got to do. <laughs> <laughs> but we got uh, something they can work with. Now, if they don't want to work with that, then call me and we'll you know, organize something else. Okay? But thank y'all. So a number of us citywide have been working on an initiative for about a year now to get around this statewide prohibition. We've, we've passed it through city council, 
Uh, it's been passed by a county commission and, and subcommittee. It's going before the full uh, county commission on Monday, and I'm looking for help on it. When it's passed, I'll give you the time stuff. When it's passed, it then has to go to the attorney general for a reading as to whether what we got in mind is legal. Uh, and, you know, a little detail. But uh, uh, the point is that, um, and it's a pretty tight vote at the county commission. Quite honestly, the Republicans think it's a little bit too much of a giveaway to put a few hundred thousand dollars a year into, into putting our houses back in service. They're dead wrong because it's really going to actually make money for them. When you take the worst house and fix it up, it floats the entire street and, and for, for, for hundreds of feet as you fix up the worst house on the block. The point is, county commission, you know, the building's downtown at 160 North Main, uh, about 215 is our best guess. Anybody can be there to support this, this uh, resolution to combat blight would be greatly appreciated. I know Lifeline was there last time we went to city council. Uh, and any, any commissioners you know in the meantime, to, uh, tell them it's the right thing to do. Thank you much. Monday. Okay, uh, Monday. Sitting at the, uh, sitting here, uh, how, if you don't have anything to do on Martin Luther King Day, what we're going to do is spearhead a day of service. And, uh, we're going to attempt to get as many school age students as possible and, and, and put an activity together that allows all age groups to participate. And we're going to call it a phrase a day of service. So if you can meet us at 10 o'clock at 1647 Dalewood, we'll give you all the instruction. That'll be Monday the 20th. That'll give us enough time to have our function, and then we can move from that and transition straight to Charlie's, those that want to be in orientation. So at 10 o'clock, I already contacted the superintendent to see how many ASD schools we can get on board to bring their students. And I'll be reaching out to Denver Elementary and, and uh, everybody else, Fraser High, to see if we can get as many. I know we need you all, but we may even try to do some fundraising with you there. But to get as many as we can get, we'll, we'll get on there. So 10 o'clock, we'll be there, and we'll, we'll coordinate, we'll see. Do something labor like just getting leaves up because the city hadn't gotten our leaves up yet out of the drains. Something that simple, but it makes the neighborhood look completely different. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Hey, real quick, y'all. You know, I just would be remiss if I didn't talk about the young people here right. and how proud I am of you all, Mr. Talley, Ms. Benson. Uh, the power behind what you all are doing, I mean, y'all, just the exposure. Y'all been getting a lesson on parliamentary procedures here today. So your history teacher possibly had taught it as good as you learned it right here in practice. At the end of the day, y'all, people probably are saying a lot of things about there's not a lot of support and there's not any warriors on the ground for y'all. But the only ground floor seeing the warriors working the details out to make sure things are better for y'all. Make sure you let them know. We in this for you, and we're going to make it better for you. And anybody don't want to get on the board, who cares about it? Because we're going to make sure y'all know.
He's got influence. He's got power. But he needs to know that you know who he is. That's simple. He needs to know that you know who he is. And that means we got to communicate with him. We got to talk to him. When you're in Nashville and you come up there to see me, you got to make it a point to go by his office and see him. And let him know you care about Shelby County, you want some jobs here, and, 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 and you got to put the kind of pressure on him to remind him that he represents Shelby County as well as the state. But first and foremost, because I promise you, Shelby County is compete with no Tennessee. Hill, Tennessee is competing with East Tennessee. And we're competing with everyone else. We've got about, what, seven or eight states that border us? And I promise you, they are competing for the same jobs, the same companies to come into their community as we are. It's, it's, it's about business. But at the end of the day, going back to that question, your, your question, you got to know who you're representing. Okay, I'm going to give you another example of an individual. And I'm, I'm, I'm calling names. Follow the names. Follow the money. His name is Brian Kelsey. He's a state senator in Shelby County. He represents the community out in Germantown. Guess who is sponsoring and promoting and passed the constitutional amendment to put it on the ballot? Brian Kelsey. Why he did, I have no earthly idea why he wanted to do something like that. I couldn't stop him because I had one vote at the end of the day. It's all about a majority in both the House and the Senate. You know, you get a majority in the House and the Senate, you pretty much pass anything you want to pass. You know, even if the government decides to be to it's like an override. But nine out of ten times, the governor moves the course of the state. It's not going over and above, but it's the governor who decided at this point that he did not want to particip participate in the affordable health care, Obamacare. It was the governor that decided that. Some of us think that that was a bad mistake because it gives access to people and health care, comprehensive good health care, and why you wouldn't want your citizens to have that. It becomes political. They say all government or all politics is local, but sometimes I think right now it's mostly all politics is national and it's based on. I'm going, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's based on who's in the White House, 